Story 11 The Magic Door Prague, the Czech Republic Lucy ran as fast as she could. It was difficult because the cobblestones in the courtyard were uneven and slowing her progress. The castle guards were closing in on her, shouting at her to stop. She kept looking over her shoulder, wondering where Jonathan was. She could see the door that would take her to safety. She only hoped that Jonathan would get there on time so they could escape through the door. It had all started 24 hours ago when the magic tree called Lucy and Jonathan for another adventure. Welcome, said the magic tree. Are you ready for your next adventure? We are, replied Lucy, eager to hear where they would be going. You are going to Prague, which is the capital of the Czech Republic, said the magic tree. Lucy and Jonathan looked at each other with excitement. The last time they were in Europe was when they solved the mystery of the silver key in Venice, Italy. They were looking forward to going back. Andel is a boy from Prague who needs your help. He will identify himself with the password sausage, said the magic tree. As they had done in their previous adventures, they pulled the lower branch of the magic tree, opening the door that led to the tree trunk. There, they found the adventure backpack, which would have everything they needed for Prague. They closed their eyes and were off. When they opened their eyes, they were in a crowded market. They were taking in the sights when they heard a voice behind them shout, Sausage! They turned around and a boy was standing there. He had a worried look on his face and was wringing his hands. Hello, I'm Andel. Welcome to the Christmas market in Prague, said the boy. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here, replied Lucy. This is a beautiful market. Andel led Lucy and Jonathan around. They admired the wooden stalls that sold all kinds of food and local handicrafts. Everyone was already in the holiday spirit and the air was filled with voices and laughter. The market was in a square surrounded by beautiful old buildings. They stopped at a stall that sold traditional Czech sausages with cabbage, served steaming hot on a paper plate. They took it and walked over to nearby wooden tables and stood eating their meal. Andel had hardly spoken and looked nervous the entire time. When they started eating, he looked around to make sure no one was nearby. He then told Lucy and Jonathan his story and why the magic tree had sent them to Prague. The previous day, Andel had gone with his class for a field trip to the Prague castle. While there, he had taken a wrong turn and had landed up going down a flight of stairs into a basement room in the castle. Andel explored the basement for a little while and was about to turn around and head back to join his classmates when his coat got stuck on a nail. As he pulled his coat to free it, he heard a popping sound and a rope fell from the ceiling. He pulled on the rope and to his surprise, a part of the wall split open to reveal a door. He didn't know what to make of it and was a little scared to open the door. Finally, his curiosity got the better of him and he mustered his courage and slowly pushed the door open. 
the door opened into the central courtyard of the palace where he had just come from. Glad that he had found a shortcut to rejoin the rest of his class, Andel stepped outside and looked around for his classmates. As he started walking around, he realized something was different and everything seemed strange in the courtyard. For one thing, it seemed a lot more crowded. Everyone was wearing costumes, dressed as if they were from medieval times. Andel didn't remember seeing them when he came into the castle. The floor of the castle was quite dirty. There was horse manure everywhere and hay scattered all over the place. It smelled strongly of smoke and manure. Everyone seemed busy. Andel started wandering around, trying to find his classmates, when he noticed that people were stopping and pointing at him. Slowly, a small crowd started following him, murmuring excitedly. He had no idea what was going on. He picked up his pace and started to run, but the crowd started running after him. He ran into an alley and then ducked into an open door. He held his breath and then, to his relief, the crowd ran past him and soon disappeared. Andel was tired as he had run as fast as he could. He was also relieved to have escaped from the crowd. He removed his cool backpack and laid it on the floor so he could take a break. Suddenly, he heard a voice behind him. A boy and girl were standing, looking curiously at him. Andel smiled at them, and they smiled back. Who are you? asked the boy. My name is Andel and I am on a field trip to Prague Castle. I cannot seem to find my classmates. Are you on a field trip as well? And is that why you are dressed in a costume? Asked Andel. I don't know what a field trip is. Our father is the blacksmith for the king. He makes the shoes for the king's horses. We live here, replied the boy. You must be from a land far away because your clothes look strange, said the girl. Andel was confused. He looked around the blacksmith's shop. And then suddenly, like a bolt of lightning, it hit him. He had traveled back in time and was in the same Prague castle but hundreds of years earlier, when a king still lived in the castle. He immediately knew he had to get back to the door he came through and return to the future. You'd better hide in here for a while, said the boy. Because of the way you are dressed, if the others see you, they will think you are a spy from another land and will throw you in the dungeons. Andel agreed. They took him to a small corner room in the back where they asked him to hide. An hour later, the boy and girl reappeared. Our father came home and saw the bag that you had left by the entrance. He was very curious about it because the bag looked so strange. We told him we had found it on the street outside. He has now taken the bag to the king, said the boy. You must hurry and leave now. Andel froze. He knew this was a big problem. Not only did he need his bag for school, but the bag also had his history textbooks. If the king read those history textbooks, he would know about the future, which would be a big problem. I need to get my bag back, pleaded Andel. You need to help me. 
The boy and girl thought for a while. They felt sorry for Andel. We will try and come up with a plan, said the girl. In the meantime, you need to go back to your land and send someone else instead because you will be recognized. Make sure they dress as we do so no one will be suspicious. The king is not in the castle, but he gets back in two days. The boy and girl gave Andel a cloak to wear and he walked with them through the narrow streets until they came to the main square. Andel pointed out the door he had come through. I will send someone to get my backpack. Can you please meet them here at the same time tomorrow and help them out? said Andel. As Andel was narrating his story, Lucy and Jonathan were mesmerized. Could there be a door in the castle that took you back in time? What would happen if the king read Andel's history books? Now you know why the magic tree sent you here, said Andel. We'd better hurry, as you need to meet the boy and girl soon. But first, we need to get you some new clothes. The three of them finished their meal and headed through the streets of Prague. They were walking towards the hill on which stood the most majestic castle that Lucy and Jonathan had ever seen. They crossed the Charles Bridge that connected the castle to the old town of Prague. A band was playing on the bridge and the air was festive with both tourists and locals enjoying the holiday season. Lucy was intrigued by all the statues that lined the bridge. There are 30 statues that line the bridge, said Andel. The original statues are hundreds of years old and so they were removed and placed in a museum. The statues you see now are all copies of the originals. They soon reached the bottom of the hill and started the climb up. The road leading up to the castle was lined with shops. It would have been an excellent place to explore if they had more time. Andel stopped at one of the shops that sold costumes. The helpful lady in the shop sold them two simple robes that Lucy and Jonathan could wear over their regular clothes. As expected, there was an envelope in the adventure backpack that had money that Lucy could use to pay for the costumes. The Czech Republic's currency is called the Czech Karuna, said Lucy, showing Jonathan a note. They made their way up to the castle entrance. There, they bought tickets and were soon following Andel to the basement. Once there, Andel showed them how to access the door. He wished them luck and Lucy and Jonathan pushed open the door to go back in time. Once they got to the other side, they stood looking around. It was strange to see the same courtyard they were in a few minutes ago, now filled with people, horses, chickens, and other livestock all around. They didn't have much time to soak it all in because a boy and girl approached them. You must be here for the bag, said the girl. Yes, I'm Lucy and this is Jonathan, replied Lucy. I am Katerine. And this is my brother Damik, said the girl. We have a plan to help get the bag back, said Damik. It is risky, but there is no other choice. If you fail, you will be thrown in the dungeons. Lucy and Jonathan looked nervously at each other. Then I guess we cannot fail, replied Jonathan. Because our father is the blacksmith to the king, we are allowed to go inside the king's residence, said Katerine.
pointing to a sack she was carrying. This sack contains horseshoes for the king's horses. We asked our father if we could deliver it. Damek continued, excited about the plan they had formed. Once we go inside, we are supposed to hand over the sack to the king's personal guard. The guard is my uncle, so Katerine and I will distract him while the two of you will sneak into the king's bedroom and get the bag. Lucy and Jonathan nodded nervously. This was by far the most dangerous adventure they had been on yet. They knew that they needed to retrieve the backpack and get out safely. Otherwise, they would be stuck and could be put into the dungeons. All four of them headed through the narrow streets. With their costumes on, Lucy and Jonathan looked like anyone else in the castle and no one paid any attention as they made their way to the king's residence. Because they were nervous, they kept their eyes on the ground, only looking up occasionally. At one point, they had to wait for a few minutes because a long line of soldiers on horses passed them. While they were waiting, Jonathan reached into his pocket and pulled out two small pieces of chocolate and handed it to Katerine and Damek. They looked at it closely and then popped it into their mouth. Their eyes grew wide with excitement as they savored the taste of the chocolate. This is the most delicious thing I have ever tasted, said Damek. I've never had anything like this before. Soon, they were in the king's residence. Katerine asked Lucy and Jonathan to hide behind a pillar and gave them instructions. Once we distract our uncle, you need to run straight down the hallway until you come to a big set of doors. That is the king's bedroom. He is not in, but the backpack is in there. There is a guard outside the door. One of you needs to distract him while the other goes into the bedroom. Good luck. Katerine and Damek then went ahead. Lucy and Jonathan could not see them, but they heard them greet their uncle. They heard Katerine ask for water and then footsteps as the uncle walked away. Quick, no one is around. Run to the bedroom, whispered Katerine as she peeked behind the pillar. Lucy and Jonathan had formed a plan. Once they got near the doors to the bedroom, they ducked behind another pillar before the bedroom guard saw them. While Jonathan remained hidden, Lucy ran out and shouted at the guard, The king has come home! He needs help! Quick! Go to the entrance! The guard looked confused but didn't move. You need to go now, shouted Lucy. The king needs help. That did it. The guard started running towards the main entrance. As soon as he left, Jonathan came out from behind the pillar, opened the bedroom door and went inside and closed the door behind him. He looked around the room but could not see the backpack anywhere. He was about to panic when suddenly he spotted it, under the table in the corner. Jonathan grabbed the backpack and was about to head out through the door when he heard Lucy's voice. No, I didn't fool you. The king was out there and he asked for you, said Lucy loudly. Jonathan knew immediately that the guard was back and so he could not go out through the bedroom door. He stood there wondering what he should do when he heard Lucy tell the guard to follow her outside. Come with me and I will show you where the king is, said Lucy loudly so Jonathan could hear. Then Jonathan heard something that made him sweat with nervousness. 
another guard had come and was standing outside the door. Now he was trapped. He looked around and saw a window that opened out into a small alleyway. He quickly went and squeezed his way out of the window. He knew he had to act fast. Meanwhile, Lucy was walking with the guard down the hallway. She knew that once she got outside, the guard would be able to see that the king was not there and would realize something was wrong. She counted on the fact that Jonathan would be able to find the backpack and meet her outside, and then they could run to safety. Lucy and the guard reached the entrance. Where is the king? I thought you said the king was outside, asked the guard. He was suspicious now and started calling other guards who were passing by. Lucy had to make a decision. She knew the longer she stood there, the more danger she was in. She had to act fast. Suddenly, Lucy saw through the corner of her eye that Jonathan was peeking out from a side alley. Now that she knew Jonathan was safe, she started running. Lucy ran as fast as she could. It was difficult because the cobblestones in the courtyard were uneven and slowing her progress. The castle guards were closing in on her, shouting at her to stop. She kept looking over her shoulder, wondering where Jonathan was. She could see the door that would take her back to safety. She only hoped that Jonathan would get there on time so they could escape through the door. Suddenly, there were guards in front of her. The guards would block her entrance to the door. She didn't know what to do. She wouldn't be able to leave anyway because she could not find Jonathan and she would not go without him. Suddenly she heard shouting. Everyone turned and looked. She recognized Jonathan's voice. Jonathan emerged from a crowd of people shouting, Gold coins for everyone! Gold coins for everyone! As he was shouting, he started throwing what seemed to be gold coins up in the air. Everyone stopped and looked. Then a roar went up in the crowd and everyone rushed to get the gold coins that Jonathan was throwing. People started running from everywhere and there was chaos all around. Even the palace guards forgot about Lucy and ran towards Jonathan. In the confusion, Lucy made it to the door and almost immediately, Jonathan was next to her. They quickly opened the door and went through. To their relief, Andel was on the other side. They were safe. Andel rushed to them. I'm so glad to see you, he said breathlessly while grabbing hold of his backpack that Jonathan handed him. Lucy's eyes were bright with excitement. Jonathan, you saved us, she said. Where did you manage to get gold coins? I got them from Andel, Jonathan replied with a smile while Andel looked confused. As I was escaping from the window, a packet fell out of Andel's bag. I picked it up and it was the chocolates that looked like gold coins, continued Jonathan. So nobody actually got gold coins, asked Lucy. No, they got something far more valuable. Chocolate, replied Jonathan with a smile. That was it. Another adventure over. Lucy and Jonathan said goodbye to a grateful Andel and removed the golden egg from their backpack. Then, as they had done several times in the past, they turned the top of the egg. 
And when they opened their eyes, they were back home. The end. Here are some fun facts on the Czech Republic. The Czech Republic is a country in Europe. Prague is the capital city. The Czech Republic used to be a part of Czechoslovakia. In 1993, Czechoslovakia split into two countries, the Czech Republic and Slovakia. The flag of the Czech Republic is the same as what used to be Czechoslovakia. Prague Castle is said to be the largest castle in the world. There are cathedrals and palaces all within the walls of the castle. The Charles Bridge that connects the Prague Castle with the old town was built over 600 years ago. And finally, Prague Castle was where the Czech royalty used to live. Today, it is the official residence and office of the President of the Czech Republic. That's it for this week. See you all next week.